<clears throat> I am going to just double check on my phone that I have actually went live. So I have to refresh. Oh, there I am. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes. I see a couple people. Hi, Carol. <laughs> I've been watching all morning. It's been so much fun. <clears throat> I'm actually surprised there's as many people as there are watching this morning, being it's a Friday. <clears throat> Hi, Kathy. It's so weird. Do you only see one person watching? <laughs> And I see two, two comments. Okay, so because I only have an hour and I am actually doing an alcohol ink um, demo, I'm going to get started right away. So I know that a lot of people um, here might just be watching me to see what alcohol ink is all about. And then there might be some people, especially if you're a card maker or a... Um, or a scrapbooker, you might have experienced alcohol ink, but maybe not in the way that I'm going to show you. And I did, hi, Aura. <laughs> she's one of my gals. So she's actually seen um, a couple of demos very similar to this recently. But um, anyway, I am going to be working on this little, let me just pull him up here, um, black cat with the crooked hat. So he's a fun little guy. And I mentioned in my list, in my supply list, that I was going to be using um, a Duralar paper. So Duralar paper is transparent. I don't know if you can see my hand through it. Maybe, maybe in the moon. There we go. Duralar is transparent. And the reason I like working on Duralar for alcohol ink projects is because you can get a lot of depth with um, with the color. And so that's what I'm going to be dem demonstrating today. So this is the Duralar that I use. It's a translucent um, paper. And um, I actually went ahead and started the project a little bit because when I did a similar project of an owl a couple weeks ago in another class, it took me a good hour and a half to get through the project. So I just wanted to make sure that we're going. So what I've done is I've traced um, the image onto my paper and I used a Copic alcohol ink marker to do it. I used a yellow one for the moon. And all I did, because the paper is transparent, is I put um, the design behind it and I just traced right through. So if you weren't using Duralar, you could definitely use like um, Yupo paper or the backside of um, photo paper. So this paper is from Costco and there's a shiny side and a dull side. And for beginner alcohol ink artists, you can use the dull side. And I've actually also heard that um, Amazon Basics photo paper is almost better than the Kirkland photo paper and it's in less expensive. I haven't actually tried it yet, but it's again a really, really good um, option for people that are just starting out with alcohol ink and don't want to spend the money on, you know, let's say the Duralar or um, Yupo paper. There's a lot of different papers out there that you can do. So, hi Ellen. Hi Mary. I see a Facebook user. I can't see comments. If, if you've granted um, StreamYard the permission to use your name, I can see your name. But if you haven't, I will just see Facebook user. So I'm just going to say hello, Facebook user. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I have a document camera that I'm going to point down. I'll be talking about all of the products that I'm going to be using today. And um, if you have any questions, just throw them up in the chat and hopefully I'll get to them. And if not, um, I will get to them after. So I'm gonna switch my camera over to my document camera. Make sure that it's pointing down for us. Here we are. Okay, so I do like to work with white paper underneath my, um, my, my drawing because it helps me see the contrast a little bit better. And all I've done here in a very messy way <laughs> is I've taken some alcohol ink 
and I put it on one of these little felt um, dabber things. And so this is like a Ranger um, brand if you're a crafter. I just saw in the last one they were using a lot of Ranger products. But it's just a little felt piece um, kind of Velcroed on here. And I put some ink on it. And in this case, this is T-Rex ink. And um, it's, a, it's a good brand. I, use, I have a lot of different brands that I'll show you. And all I did was put it straight on here. And... Um, I dabbed it on the paper, okay? So this helps it go really, really fast. If you don't have one of these little felt pieces, you can use Q-tips, you can use a paintbrush. Um, with paintbrushes and, and alcohol ink, you don't wanna wash the paintbrush out with water, cause that's not gonna work. But you could have a little cup of you know, isopropyl alcohol right next to you and use that to rinse off your brush. And that's totally something that I do um, quite often. I have taken a lot of different alcohol ink courses and I have a bunch that I actually teach online. And when I was first getting started and taking the courses, I kind of developed my own way of using um, alcohol ink. And believe it or not, <laughs> I use Q-tips to paint with. And it, it's just, for me, it just works really well. Um, if, you, if you've ever heard of pointillism in drawing or painting, it's like just doing a bunch of little dots. And for me, that really works for blending. So I really like to use Q-tips. Um, in this case, Q-tips would take a really, really long time. But I want to show you the magic of alcohol ink um, and how awesome the texture can be in a very, very simple application. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just doing a majority of where I'm going to be having the sky in the background with this little dabber. And I'm going to put blue onto my Q-tip. And I'm going to get really, really close around the edges. So um, I'm just going to go around here real quick. And you can see that obviously the Q-tip is going to touch a lot less surface area. And so it would, it can be done, but it would take maybe a little bit longer um, of a time to cover your whole piece. I have had people not have alcohol ink bottles full of ink. And they've taken, let's say, an alcohol ink marker and the broad side of the marker and just colored in the background with, with big strokes because it doesn't really matter what it looks like at this point because you're going to see what I do here. So I have um, a Distress spray bottle and instead of putting water in it, I've put isopropyl alcohol in it. And I tend to like to use 91 or 99% isopropyl alcohol. The reason for that is it contains less water. So it will absorb, uh, or I'm sorry, um, evaporate really, really quickly and um, not leave behind water residue. The 70% tends to leave behind residue. So you want to make sure that you're in a very well ventilated area. And you notice that I have gloves on. I haven't really talked about the safety of this, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on. I have a um, air purifier next to me. Hopefully you don't hear that too much. And I've got all my windows open because there is a fume that happens with alcohol as it absorbs. And we want to make sure that we're safe with that. Some people do wear respirator masks or masks um, to keep their lungs healthy. So that's something that you might want to think about. I'm definitely um, in an open area right now, so I'm not going to do that. But I do have my gloves on because I don't want the alcohol and ink seeping into my skin. So I'm going to take this little sprayer and I'm just going to spray the page. And I want to get this kind of close so you guys can see what happens when I spray it. So it's creating this really cool, almost like textured star effect. So what happens is that the alcohol pushes the ink away when it lands on the paper. And it kind of forms what we're looking at is kind of like a starry sky, right? So um, I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna actually, um, once that's dry, I'm gonna actually turn behind me and just turn on a little, my little heat gun. Sorry, hold on one second. All right, I'm gonna turn this over. 
and I'm going to use a different color on the back side, just in a few areas. So this is gonna give us a little bit of depth to the sky. So I'm just taking, this is um, Sapphire Blue from Jacquard. This is another alcohol ink brand on the market. A lot of these companies do carry packs of um, different kinds of alcohol inks or different like lines of alcohol inks, color combinations. I like, I, I tend to like the Ranger brand the best. However, they come in packs of three and um, they're kind of randomly selected colors that, you know, you might think, oh, I want, you know, green. And then it contains green, but not like two other greens. It contains like orange and then pink or something. It's kind of random. So I'm just gonna do this on the back side real quick. I'm not gonna get too crazy with this because of time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spray the back here. So this is gonna be giving it a little bit more texture. And when I turn it over, um, you, maybe you can see a little bit. So I didn't do it in this area here or right here. And you can see that that adds a little bit of more depth to the painting. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and clean up a little bit of my mess in the moon. And to do that, I'm just going to use um, some alcohol. And I, I store my alcohol in these little needle nose bottles. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just kind of clean up the moon. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it got a little messy. And I don't want the blue inside too much. One thing I didn't talk to you about is on the opposite side, I did um, also trace my image in case I lost any of the image. I sprayed over it here. So there's like a little bit of um, spray markings. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I could have that image even on, um, or on the other side, even if I lost it on the front. Does anybody have any questions up until now? So um, I just see hellos, hellos, hellos. So hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. My friend Kathy invited me and then I got to meet Carol and I'm just so honored to be part of this because I've really enjoyed watching those artists earlier this morning and I can't wait to do their projects. And I'm actually gonna, um, Melanie was talking about the, the pumpkin lumps and I'm gonna use that today. <laughs> Cause I don't know what they're called either. And I was like, ooh, that's a good idea. The pumpkin lumps, little sections of the pumpkins. Okay, so on the back side of the paper, you can see that I've gotten a couple smears and that's because I'm rushing a little bit, but um, you can easily, I think that's actually on the other side. Let me just, let me just go back and see. Yeah, it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the back side of this. So I've done most of my sky on the front side. Now on the back side, I'm gonna do some of um, some of the moon. So what I have right now, so Mary says I'm mesmer mesmerized right now, soaking this all in. Yeah, alcohol ink is super cool. So I can't wait to show you the rest of it. So this is Copic um, Various Ink. This is one of the most expensive alcohol inks on the market. However, it really is the best. Um, but buying these refills is a really smart way to do it. These actually refill alcohol ink markers, but there's a lot more in here and it doesn't, you know, you're not buying the actual marker with the, the nib or anything like that. You're just buying the ink. So this is an inexpensive way to buy the Copic markers. So I'm going to use this really light gray. So this is light gray C2. So it's a cool gray um, too. And you can see how that kind of seeped into my cat, which isn't going to matter because he's going to be black. And I'm just going to spread this around my moon. It's a very, very light gray. And you might be thinking, why is she doing that? Because she can barely see it. You'll see in a second. So... 
I'm just spreading it around with a Q-tip. And when you spray the moon, this is, I'm really kind of bummed out at how sloppy I was being <laughs> creating this earlier, but you guys get the picture. I just want to show you how to do it, and then you can do it and be a little bit more careful than I am right now. When I did that test run a couple weeks ago, I was like, oh no, an hour and a half. Ah! Okay, so I'm going to take my um, distress, distress sprayer and my alcohol, and I'm just going to try to get like big drops of alcohol in here. And then I'm going to try to bring it up so you guys can see what's happening again. Let me try to get the lighting right. See how that's um, opening up and looking like a moon, like moon spots? Um, and that's basically, I can't get it like perfectly with the lighting in the camera. Let me try to get the side one. That one looks a little funky still because of the cat. But you can see it right in here. So that's like, it looks more like the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it with my little heat dryer. And then I'm going to come back to you guys. So what I do most of the time is that I work my paintings mostly on the front. And then I do like my highlighting and shadowing in the back. And the reason for that is that I, you know, I can stay away from messing things up too much um, by doing it that way. So, you know, again, this cat's going to be black, so this doesn't really matter. But this part of the moon is messed up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take black ink and I'm going to fill in the cat. So I've got black. This is pitch black by, um, this is a ranger, Tim Holtz ranger um, black. And then I've got the T-Rex black here. And then I also could use um, the alcohol ink, Copic alcohol ink marker that I have. So it's really kind of up to you guys what you want to try. I do have a whole set, a really, really nice set of, thank you, Carol, for that, um, a really, really nice set of um, alcohol inks, that alcohol ink markers that I got on Amazon, and they're called Color uh, or Shuttle Art Markers, and they were like, I think there was like 82 of them for like $35 or something. And the reason that I like the shuttle art is number one, they are super inexpensive for however many you're going to get when you compare it to prices of other um, brands, but they're really, really juicy markers. So when you are, you know, putting dots of alcohol ink down, um, you know, they, it acts just like this. So if I were to use my Copic, I'm hoping this one's not too dried out. Um, and I start dotting it down. It's got a lot of ink. And so it's acting like it has as much ink as my Q-tip does. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Hi, Facebook user from Georgia. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so um, I'm just using this Q-tip. And I'm just doing my little pointillism technique and putting some um, dot, dots down and trying to fill in the cat. And so I'm just gonna do this really fast. I wanna just give you guys at least the idea of what's happening here. And then if we run out of time, you know, at least you'll know what I did. And just go a little deeper into it with technique. So I got into alcohol ink, um, let's see, 2018. I had been, I was recovering from an abusive marriage and I went into therapy and my therapist was like, you know, you need to start doing some art. So I was talking about my family and how artistic everybody was. And she's like, you need to do art. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Cause I, you know, conditioned to believe I heard Kathy talking about somebody that in kindergarten, <clears throat> they were told that their, you know, work was horrible and the teacher showed it around the class. I mean, that was kind of my experience my whole life. Growing up, I was just always like, you know, told that I could do better and no, that's not good enough and that sort of thing. So I was really scared and she's like, you know, you don't have to do, um, you don't have to do this for anybody else. Just do it for yourself. <clears throat> and it's a book, you know, it's a journal. 
And that's why I'm so happy you guys are doing journaling projects. There's other artists on here doing journaling. I think art journaling is so important. Um, <clears throat> so she's like, you know, nobody has to see it. You don't even have to show me if you don't want to. And so I finally decided, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I picked up a journal and my first thing I drew was a mermaid. Don't ask me why, but I did. And she was good. I was like, oh, I can draw. This is amazing. And so I kept, kept going. And then one of my friends was like, can I buy those mermaids? Can you make them into cards? And I was like, sure. <laughs> what? Like, you want to buy my stuff? And um, thanks, Ellen. I, I have, you know, you look back and you're like, wow, how far I've come. Um, <clears throat> so she bought my mermaids. And then, you know, I just started into, I wanted to do abstract stuff because I was scared to do anything realistic. And um, I found acrylic pouring and that was so fun doing the pouring. So I'm going to go back in and, um, kind of fix just like around some of the outside areas with my Copic marker here. And I'm not going to be doing any spraying on my cat. I'm just going to let him be black and, um, and I'll show you like some more shadow details and stuff later. Um, yeah, so I started doing acrylic pouring, and then just in that search for that, it was like I went on YouTube, and I found alcohol ink, and I was like, whoa, what's that? And it was a lot of that abstract, like, really wispy type stuff, and, um, you know, I started doing that and following some people and just thinking, oh my gosh, there's just so much that you can do with alcohol ink, and... I had seen, you know, like an airbrush and somebody like moving stuff around with an airbrush. And, you know, at the time <laughs> I needed a lot of therapy. So I was doing a lot of art and um, I got an airbrush and I started playing with this airbrush and I discovered like a really cool way to do alcohol ink flowers. And basically, you know, I'm sure you've seen it now, like everywhere, but um, if you've like looked up alcohol ink flowers, um, I just kind of put a drop of ink down and, you know, then put a little drop of alcohol and then blow the petals with my airbrush. And it forms these like amazing looking realistic petals for flowers. And um, I'm going to use the marker for the hat. And the reason I'm doing that is because of the folds in the hat. I want to make sure that um, they look like folds. And so, again, you could use a Q-tip, but I'm just going to try to vary my, my tools just so that if you don't want to buy ink bottles, you don't have to. Um, yeah, so then I, you know, and then people were like, how do you do that? And at that time, there was myself and this other artist named Kimberly Dean, who's an amazing floral artist. She's actually like, I say she's the queen of florals. <laughs> um, she uses canned air. And uh, at the time, we were, we were really the only ones like doing um these florals. And so we both had classes out and, you know, it's been amazing. I've had some amazing students come through my course and it's just so cool how like, you know, they've taken it further than I have. And, you know, we all learn from each other. And then, um, then I just, I stopped, stopped saying to myself that I can't. And I uh, started creating animals and like really realistic looking animals. And so then I thought, why not put together a an alcohol ink animal course? If you have time, I'll show you my, my stuff at the end. So I'm just filling in all of this with black. And then I'm just gonna leave it and move on to the pumpkins. So I've had some people that have taken my animal course that have, you know, reached out and said, there's no way that I could do this. Are you sure I can take this class? And I said, there's absolutely um, a way that you can do it and I will show you how. And, um, and they've produced some amazing, amazing looking animals. It's so fun to see. Okay. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> you know, art heals. That's what I say. Art heals it's uh it's like literally changed my life so okay so we're gonna go move on to the pumpkins I'm gonna use this little dental well so this dental well is um I used to be in dental dentistry believe it or not <laughs> that's part of my story too I've changed careers three times 
um, this little dental well and I'm going to put some ink out there and I'm also going to put a little bit of ink on my Q-tip. So this is orange. This is terracotta by Ranger and I like it because it's kind of like that dark, you know, kind of more rustic looking orange. And I'm going to do the pumpkin lumps. <laughs> Melanie, you crack me up if you're watching. Um, so I'm just going to fill in the pumpkin lumps with the orange. And this is where you're going to start seeing some cool stuff happening. So really, like the first part of this painting is just, you know, laying down the color. And you could even go in like this and just kind of color it in because we are going to spray it and add texture with the with the spray bottle. I've been talking a lot the last couple of days and my voice feels like it's starting to crack. Okay, and I should never sing. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just keep dotting on there here. Um, here we go. So yes, yeah, so, it's so since, you know, I mean, that's basically become my full-time job is um, I, I, at the time that I found art, I owned a gym. So I went from dentistry <laughs> to, I had gained like, I don't know, 76 pounds or something when I was pregnant with my son and I lost all the weight and I, I wanted to be home with him. And so I became a personal trainer and then that went into like being a, a manager at Lifetime Athletic and, um, and then I really just didn't like corporate. And so my friends and I opened a gym and I ended up leaving my husband and all kinds of craziness with that and um, had a restraining order. And so I had uh, gotten full, full custody of my son who has autism and I just really didn't have time for the gym. And so <clears throat> finding this art thing and I had done an art party. So I, my friend that asked me to do the mermaids had said, you know, can you come and do um, one of those acrylic pouring parties at my house? And I thought, okay, sure, but hmm, how is this gonna, how am I gonna get, you know, these supplies to the house? And I figured out a way to do it. And there was like 25 people there that I, that I charged $45 each for, and just do the math, and it, like three hours, you know? I was like, oh, I think I could do this as a business. Um, very easily. And so I did, that's what I did. I ended up <clears throat> selling my shares of the gym and, um, doing pay parties full time. And I also <laughs> put together a class on how to teach, um, acrylic pouring parties. And that's been one of my most popular classes. I think I have like 3000 students that have taken that class and like, you know, started their own paint party journeys, um, doing that. And th that's been super fun. Okay. So this is, let's see, what did I use? Teak wood, teak wood brown, okay? Um, I put it right on the orange Q-tip and I flipped my paper over. So on this side of the paper, I'm actually gonna be doing the shadowing of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna do like one section of the pumpkin lumps. Melanie, you're not gonna get away from this. I love that saying. And you can see how that adds shadow to the front of the pumpkin. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna go around each of these sections and do this brown. So you can w keep working both sides of the paper, okay? So I'm just gonna keep going in and I'm gonna keep adding ink to each side of the paper. And <clears throat> when I'm using a, so what I find is when I use a brush, I just don't have the same control that I do um, with my Q-tip. I just feel like, you know, it puts down a dot, the dot doesn't spread out too much. With brushes, it's like you have to kinda really mess and play with the amount of ink that you have on it. Otherwise the ink blows up. And um, what I should do is kind of show you without doing it here on um, just a regular piece of paper, just not regular piece of paper, but like a paper for alcohol inks. What happens when you put, you know, ink inside of ink and why you would kind of want to vary the amount of ink that you have on your Q-tip. 
well, actually, I could probably do it just with this next part. Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm gonna just finish up here. Again, I'm not gonna go super crazy with this painting because I just want you guys to see what, what I do. So on the back side, I'm going to take um, brown straight out of the bottle, okay? And I'm going to put dots down here. And you can see how the ink is kind of like blowing up, okay? So in some parts it, um, it you know, expands more than in other parts. And that's just what alcohol ink does. That's kind of the cool thing about it. And a lot of people, you know, try to control it. I do definitely try to control it, but sometimes it's fun to just not control it. So the, the spots that didn't spread out, I'm just going to kind of move a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with some different color browns. So <clears throat> that one was the teak wood. Okay, so we're making the, the rocks now, the rocks at the bottom. <laughs> Kathy loves Q-tips too. Thank you, Tara. I think it's going to, I think that you guys might get addicted and I'm not responsible for the amount of um, addiction. <laughs> I have to, uh, I have to give that disclaimer. It's not my fault because it is addicting. Okay. So I'm just going to, so see how those, um, those spots are just kind of like spreading and doing their own thing. I just think this makes such a fun background. And like when I do my landscapes in alcohol ink, these like make like the coolest boulders and rocks. And it's just like, you just kind of just let it happen. Okay. So I am going to, we're working on the back side of the paper, right? Or this is the front. This is the front. This is the front. This is the front side of the paper. And I should have been working on the back, but it doesn't really matter. You can choose what you're going to do and what, what you're not going to do. So I'm just going to cover up the rest of my painting with just a paper towel and then I'm going to spray um, this with alcohol. So let me get that in view. See how that kind of like adds even more texture and so you can keep playing with it. You know you can go in and like blot in some um, some of the ink around and I'm going to go grab one more brown that I typically like to use in these situations. Let's see. I'm going to grab, um, I don't know if you saw the video at the beginning. I have this huge wall, which has a, uh, like nail polish holder and it has, um, <laughs> it's full of inks because I have to have all the colors of every brand. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Okay. So I'm going to just put some spots down just to kind of fill in, you know, just be random. You just kind of watch the ink do its thing. And that's the fun part of alcohol ink is like, you can control it to some degree, but then, you know, why not just like let it be itself? Let, let it be the ink. I'm gonna move it around in some of the areas that just kind of pull, pulled up on me and that are really, really thick. I'm just gonna kind of move a little bit. But look at that super cool texture, right? I'm going to go like right under where the pumpkin is. Sorry, I didn't turn off the uh, email alerts. And I kind of, you know, I got a spot that like blew up on the pumpkin, but this is kind of the look of these alcohol ink paintings, right? I'm going to use my little air dryer and dry this really fast. It has a very short cord, so. And I typically work on the desk that's behind me um, for when I'm painting, but the lighting is horrible for videos, so I move over here. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more of that spray, and I'm going to try to focus it away from the cat. And I'm just, I'm barely using that spritzer, but, um, you know, if you pump it, like, really slow, it gets bigger drops, and that's kind of what I wanted. So I'm going to take that Q-tip or these Q-tips and um, even though I did some color on the back, I'm going to um, kind of continue on the front a little bit. And this is the side that I use the black marker 
to create the outline. And so I'm going back over that with the brown in these sections so that um, I kind of pull the black up and it starts to, you know, it starts to take it off and then it'll start to look a little bit more natural. I'll show you, I'll pull up my, my other um, painting here in a second. So again, kind of going over these. Let's see. <laughs> Carol says she's going getting feels herself getting uh, addicted right now. I know. They're so fun. I've done some pretty I've actually surprised myself on some of my paintings and it was like that was so easy but it was because I just like kind of let go of that control of um you know needing to it to do a certain thing and then it's like I discovered oh my gosh this is super cool um how it's turning out so I'm gonna grab let's see <clears throat> I'm gonna grab some crimson red and I'm gonna mix it in with the terracotta because I want these pumpkins to be just a little tiny bit more um red i want that red to kind of come through so i'm putting a drop of um crimson a couple drops of the terracotta and then i'm just going to go ahead and put a couple or maybe a drop of this teakwood so the only way that you can really mix together alcohol inks is to combine them in these wells otherwise what's going to happen is that you're going to get um the ink, when you put the ink down, it's going to move whatever's underneath it out of the way. And so <clears throat> you need to you need to either learn how to blend, like with my Q-tip technique, there's like a really easy blending. And if I can get this done fast enough, I can show you guys this at the end. <clears throat> I do want to offer, so I'm going to be offering at the end, you know, 50% off of all my classes. However, I want to offer you guys my alcohol inks basics class for free. So if you want that class for free, just type in the comments um, free class and I will send you a code to get that class for free. So um, I offer it, I think it's $10 or something on my on my website, but please feel free to um, take advantage of that because it. I think I have a couple landscapes in there and I have a couple painted flowers. And I just love spreading the love of alcohol ink. So um, just type in the comments if you want me to send you that code and I'll give you that class for free. Because there's a little bit more that I get into and I think you'll like it. Okay, so you can see how that rich richened it a little bit. Richened it up. And when you're putting down your, um, when you're putting down your dots, Try to keep them far away from each other because that is where you're going to get that kind of hammered effect. And that's what I call it. Like, it's like a hammered look. If you were to look at like hammered metal or something, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. I'm sure you guys understand what I'm talking about. Okay. I can also do this on the back side. So I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to add like shadowing. So if you're thinking about like the moon's coming this way, all of this stuff down here is going to be kind of shadowed and shaded from the sun like or the moon obviously the, where the cat is you know it's going to have some more shading so you can go in and um, kind of fix or add some more depth and shadow on the back side so the moon let's say you know it's coming this way maybe this much is shadowed and then obviously under his tail or her tail. Okay. And then, you know, under the pumpkins, you know, maybe there's some shadowing on the ground. And you could do this with like a dark gray. You could do this with more brown. Um, you know, be creative with that. Sometimes I even put, like to put the drops of ink on this backside and I'll just do it here <laughs> just to add a little bit more depth. <laughs> Yay, Pam. Um, let's see. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more depth. And you don't have to go super crazy. Of course, I'm like, I keep going back. Um, this is going to, you know, it'll show through to the other side and it's just going to add some, you know, more depth to the other side. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit. I'm actually doing pretty good on time. 
I don't know if I'm super stoked with the painting, but as far as time goes, we still got 20 minutes. I feel like I'm getting there. Um, Ellen, I think, I think you've seen it all, but <laughs> take it if you want. It's, uh, there's painted flowers, um, and landscapes. I did a, I think there's a free, um, I think my, I did a painting of, um, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, oh my gosh, cherry blossoms. Hello cherry blossoms. So I'm going to spritz this with a little, um, so it, the cherry blossoms that I did in the free class are painted. So I used a paint brush to paint those. So I want to um, dry this again. Otherwise I start getting sticky um, on the other side. Okay, so let's see what happened over here with the painting. So you can start to see like, I mean, obviously this isn't shadowed correctly, but you can see now how that adds, you know, so much depth to the painting, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to, uh, just for the sake of doing something a little different, I'm going to use um, these shuttle art markers that I talked about earlier. Can you see them? Um, this lighting is really bright. So I, this is the pack of like 80 I got for like $35 I'm sh on Amazon. So I'm going to use those. So this is, this one is, what color is this? This is deep um, olive green. And I'm going to kind of just retrace this. So I would suggest like, let's say you are doing the tracing with um, alcohol ink markers maybe use the colors that you're gonna use um, in the actual painting to trace with. So for instance, like I might've used like a dark orange or a brown instead of black for the pumpkins. And then here, you know, I could have used the green for the leaves, but I didn't. <clears throat> but I would say, you know, if you are gonna do that, do it in that way, um, I would, that's what I would do. I'm going to add a little bit of green to the stem. We're going to make it kind of brown, but I'm going to add a little bit of green to the stem. Just to add some color. And on the opposite side, I, um, I actually did trace the little curly cues. And so I can actually retrace those on the back side and that's going to help me see, you know, if you, if you feel, don't feel confident enough to do those curly cues by yourself. Um, I'm just going to do something random over here. That got super sloppy. On the back side, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take some like dark brown and I'm just going to, you know, give the stem a little bit of texture by just kind of creating some like hash mark lines. And I'm going to do, do that to the leaves too. So I saw Kathy doing leaves this morning. She did a really nice job with those and I'm doing this really fast, but it's the same concept. You're just kind of adding um, some veining in there. It could be as crazy with that as you want, but you can see now that added a little bit more to this side. Um, and I'm just gonna go in with some like really bright green now and just kind of dab it on and just play here. <clears throat> I like doing, again, I like doing the dots, but you know, what this is gonna do is it, it is pushing away that uh, olive green color, but it's also kind of pushing it out so that, you know, these little rings of alcohol that, that happen, they have like a mix between the two, but they're not like blended, if that makes sense. So, let's see. I can kind of see through my paper <laughs> as to where those little little thing thingies are, the little spirals. So I'm just going to kind of go in and play with that a little bit, put some more of that olive green in. I never really like to use super bright green for my foliage because it's just not natural, but that's because I get obsessed with detail and 
perfectionism sometimes. Okay. So you can see like around my pumpkin, it's um, a little bit, there's, I've missed some of the spots for the sky and I can go back and fix that. But let's go ahead and move on. I'm just gonna do the collar and the sash. So um, I like using markers for this because if you, let me just get this on and then I'll show you what happens. So I'm doing long strokes. And I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to bring it up close after I do one stroke and show you. So I'm going to do the this little collar or her collar this way. Purple, of course, use any color you'd like. Okay. So I'll let that dry. <clears throat> so I want you to see, well, actually it's kind of showing. So you can see those like lines that, that have been created with the marker. If I were to draw a line straight down the middle, I want you to see how that kind of creates it. Like, again, pushes that ink away and it creates that texture. So this almost looks like a textured piece of uh, ribbon. And so that's why I like to kind of go in and, you know, you want to let it dry a little bit in between. Otherwise, it's just going to make like a solid, you know, wet area and then everything's going to push out to the side. But let it dry a little bit, add a little hash mark, let it dry, add a hash mark, let it dry, add a hash mark. And I can go back to with my black or I could use a really, really, really dark gray color. Let me try to get that out of the out of the um, overhead light. And I can just like go into the hat and do the same thing. And what this is going to do is it's going to start kind of like, let's say highlighting the top of the wrinkles of the hat. So you see that? See how I kind of just by adding a little bit of a lighter ink, it's now um, adding some highlight to the wrinkles of the hat. So I'm almost using it as um, somebody in here is going to be doing a reverse painting where they're doing like a sunflower and they're starting out with black. It's kind of what I'm. Ha it's what it's kind of like what we're doing here. Sorry, I'm kind of losing my words. Um, but I'm, and I'm being kind of dramatic, <laughs> kind of overdoing it a little bit, a little bit overkill. But I just wanted you to see that you can add some of that wrinkling effect here. I didn't do it that much here. I kind of did it on the inside, but you know, you can make that hat look really crooked and really wrinkly by just doing that kind of reverse technique um, of pulling the ink or lifting the ink is what they call it in the alcohol ink world. Um, I'm gonna go in with a yellow marker and I'm going to just kind of trace around the outsides of the cat. So instead of like having white in his eyes, he's got yellow. And um, if you get really into alcohol ink, there's these markers, they're called blending pens. And they're, it's basically like a clear ink. And it kind of works like what I'm doing now is it just kind of moves everything out of the way. I'm doing that, but I'm also putting yellow down at the same time. But you can see me kind of going off to the side and wiping my the tip of my pen off. And that's because it's picking up and removing the black that was there before. So, um, so I'm doing that. I'm going to go back in with, this is a a Copic multi-liner pen. You could use any black pen, but I'm just gonna kind of reshape my, the pupils of his eyes because I kind of got in there a little bit too much with the yellow. I always like to leave those like little window reflections in the eyes. So it gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. In my animal class, I teach you how to really make some realistic looking eyes with alcohol ink, which I think is like my favorite thing to use for eyes. I'm gonna give him a little bit of a pink nose. Woo, something happened in this pen. It's like big chunks of something. Who knows what I was doing with that? Like. Very, very subtle pink. 
I'm going to go in with a dark gray and I'm going to do the rim of his hat and just kind of give that a little bit of a highlight. So again, it's these long strokes and that's just kind of pulling the ink off, the black ink off and leaving behind this really, really kind of dark gray. So it's a step down from black and that's why you're seeing a contrast or a little bit of a contrast. So this is, uh, let's see, Shuttle Art, Shuttle Art Marker CG7, so cool gray seven. <clears throat> I'm also going to do that kind of on the highlight of like where his little leg would be. So we're just giving it a little bit of highlight right there to show that, you know, it's kind of um, getting lit up by the moon, let's say. I'm going to go in and fill in this black area here that I missed on the cat. I'm actually shocked that I have 10 minutes to go. So I'm going to go back on the opposite side with some blue and kind of fill in the um, this sky area where I missed around the pumpkin. And then we will finish off with some gold, which is really fun. Okay, so I got blue. If you get determined to do something, you can do it. You can finish in an hour. Okay, so this is just filling in. If I want to fill in around the moon just a little bit, this is why I like using that white paper because I'm using a puppy pad underneath me. So this is just like a super absorbent um, pad for doggies. <laughs> and I like it because it absorbs the ink really, really well and doesn't make a mess of my table and I can just throw it away and I can keep reusing it over and over again until I just don't want to anymore. Okay, so I'm just kind of cleaning everything up, making um, making everything kind of match up on the other side. Let's see, make sure there's no white around the edges. And I could go back in and fix the shadows and everything, but I think you guys get the idea. So there's a couple things that you need to do or you can do or use to create like a, the gold around the moon. So in this painting, I actually use gold leaf, gold leafing, and I'll show you what that product is. But I did a little gold ring around the moon and some stars. And so I'm going to show that to you with the ac acrylic marker. So I have, um, this is one of my favorite gold markers. It's one of the more expensive ones. This is by Pebio. Um, it's an acrylic marker. I love it because of how gold it is. However, I know Deco Art has one and I think I posted that one for just for <clears throat> the sake of the expense of them. Um, but you know, just any gold would work. If you have gold acrylic paint, you could use a fine liner brush and you know, kind of paint the edge. I just think it adds something to the painting to have like that gold ring around it. The gold leafing is super fun. Um, and I'll show you the product. It's by Pebio. Pebio has some great stuff. They're just really expensive. So simple as that. Again, my, my circle's not that super great. And then I'll just go around and do, you know, little stars in the sky all over. You could even do, if you wanted, um, you know, some like highlights on, on top of the pumpkin, um, the little stems, on top of the leaves. Um, if you wanted to on top of this hat somewhere, you could do it, you know, like little gold spots on the, on the little um, rocks down below, um, anything like that. Okay, so my Pebio, oh my goodness. I should have had this out so that you could see it, but I didn't. Okay, so this is um, the product that I use for the gold mirror effects. So it's called mirror effects. And um, I use this, so it's mix, Mixion Relief. 
it's basically a paste that you can use this very, very fine tip and you can kind of paint it around the edges. It does take a little while to dry. That's why I didn't use it today. But basically once it's dry and you feel it kind of tacky, you can go in and um, you take one of these little sheets of leafing and you just lay it down and then smooth it over the surface. And then when you lift, it has this really, really cool, um, you know, just it leaves behind what you um, put down. So you kind of you can make like kind of choppy little marks or, you know, whatever you want. But again, you just kind of rub this down after it's dry. It has a little tack to it and then you pull it and it has and it leaves behind the gold. They have this in all kinds of different colors. I just have the gold, but this is um, an example of a sheet that I've used a million times. This is, this is actually silver, but you can see, like I've used it so many times and I kind of like it when it gets to this point because then it doesn't pull off in exactly, you know, the same line everywhere. Um, and it just adds something to the paintings. So I think as far as this goes, we are, you know, pretty close to being done. Um, obviously I could go in and play and, you know, fix, um, shadowing and stuff like that. Um, but I'll do that a little bit later. I did post a picture of the cats, um, so that you could use it as reference. And again, if you wanted to do it on, let's say, you know, the backside of photo paper, you would just need, and I know that they've talked about this in other, um, other sessions this morning, you would just need to print out the image on like an eight by 10, and then you could use some of this carbon paper and you could just put it down and then, you know, put your, your printed image and then use a pen to kind of trace through. And then you would get the, that image transferred to your paper. But remember, if you're using the backside of photo paper, you're using the wrong side. So with alcohol ink and with photo paper, photo paper wants to absorb ink on the shiny side. And, um, and then the back side is like really, really smooth and non-porous. And so the alcohol ink doesn't sink in to the paper on the back side. Since we're here, I'm just gonna show you something real quick. <clears throat> so I just wanna show you kind of in a big way, like something more visual, what happens with the ink when you put one ink on top of the other. So we'll do a couple things here um, real fast. While I'm doing that, um, I'll tell you a little bit about my, my business. My website is virginiacrow.com. I um, teach a lot of alcohol ink classes. I teach a lot of acrylic painting classes. I have a couple of memberships. One of my memberships supports um, women who, or men, who are doing paint parties. And I create four new designs for them every single month and include every single one of the marketing materials. So that includes animated Facebook posts, social media, all of the um, posts for um, Facebook, your email, all of that stuff are branded to each of the paintings. So basically you get a video of me doing the paintings, you get all of the, the four new designs, you get rights to use the designs, and um, I'm offering that to you guys for $20 a month. So if you're interested in that membership, if you're a paint party business owner, um, let me know. So you can see here, this is um, what kind of happens with the alcohol. So all I was doing was spotting down some alcohol um, and it opens it up um, and pushes that ink to the side. And then here's a little bit more of a visual of the spray. So if I spray it, now you can see how many like layers can happen. You can make all kinds of textures. If I'm gonna be putting in another, um, let's say black, it's just, oops it's because the, the alcohol wasn't dry yet. Um, it's basically gonna just kind of seep out and push the ink away, but I wanted you to be able to see that on a little bit closer of a level. And I have two minutes to go, so I wanted to thank you guys so much for joining me. And um, again, if you, want, um, if you want that free class, uh, let me know and I will get that to you and then I'll be providing a code. Actually, it's going to be Virginia 50 if you want 50% off of any of the classes that I offer. It'll be Virginia 50, but I'll um, put that in a little thing and add, add it to my um, 
my guide, guide five. So thank you so much for um, joining me. And if you're watching the replay, ask questions and I'll come back on and answer them. And I appreciate you all being here. Have a fantastic rest of the day. And I can't, can't wait to watch the other artists. So I don't remember who's up next, but I'm gonna be here to watch. Thanks guys, bye.